welcome to ECLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic of statistics and our subtopic today is creating frequency distribution tables. So we are going to see how we create uh, frequency distribution tables given a specific set of data and then we are going to practice how to do so. So the first thing um, this is a, a branch of mathematics that is statistics that deals with the collection, organization, representation, and interpretation of data. And we know that data is the basic information. So when the data is collected, it is organized. So basically what we are doing is organizing that data. And then later on, we are going to see uh, different ways in which we can represent that data. And then if you are given a certain representation, how are you able to interpret that data? So the first thing we are going to start with is a frequency distribution table. So the, for example, the table that we have been given is um, a table that has a set of scores and their frequencies. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the tallying is the number, the number of times it occurs. Like if you look at the score one, it occurred four times, and that is going to be the frequency or the number of times it occurs. And then number um, two occurs nine times because you can see the first is five, and this, this is uh, four, and it gives us nine. So that's how we create a frequency distribution table. So in telling each stroke represents the quantity, and then the frequency is the number of times an item or a value occurs. So let's look at an example. This, this is a set of data that we've been given for 20 students. So we are going to prepare a distribution uh, table for, for this um, for this data. So the, the first thing we are going to look to write here is the max because that is what we have. And then we have the tally. And then we have the frequency. So the first thing you need to arrange your data in an ascending order that is from the smallest to the largest. You can go ahead and do that or you can decide to use observation by checking the list number. If you look at our numbers, three is the list. So we can start with three. You can go ahead and make another data starting with the list. Uh, although that of course will, will take a little bit of time. So you can just indicate. So we are going to start with three, three occurs uh, how many times? It occurs two times. So max three max occurs uh, twice. So the frequency is going to be two. And then it's followed by four. So four only occurs once, as you can see. So four max occurs once. So the frequency is going to be one. And then five occurs one, two, three, four, five. So the max five occurs five times, so one, two, three, four, and then we cross with another one. So the frequency is going to be five. And then six occurs how many times? One, two, three, three times. So the, the, the tally is going to be three, the frequency is going to be three. And then seven, seven occurs, we don't have seven in our max, so we are going to go to the next one, which is eight. Eight occurs three times, one, two, three. So eight occurs three times, so the frequency is three. And then uh, nine occurs one, two, twice. So the tally is going to be two. And then uh, 10 occurs once. So the, the, the frequency is going to be one. And then 11 occurs also one. So the frequency is going to be 1. And then we don't have 12 in our data, but we do have 13 in our data. And 13 occurs 1, 2, twice. So you notice if you add the frequencies or the tallies, you are going to get 20. So you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Or you can go ahead and add these values. You notice that the total frequency is going to be 20. That's also we are talking about the number of students that uh, were able to get the specific marks shown.
so that's how we create a frequency distribution table so let's do this one as the last one so we are, remember we are going to have um 48 people give the num give the number of children in their homes as follows so we are going this is going to be number of children and then you have the tally and then we have the frequency so in this case now our uh, the least number we have is one so we are going to have the ones who say they have one sibling so let's count how many so we have one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight of them so one two three four five six seven eight so the frequency is eight and then the ones who have two children or siblings so is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i said that you can decide to write down your your data in from the largest to the smallest but that will mean that you need to spend more time again doing that so we said that the number of uh, people who had two children at their homes are nine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i thought they were eleven so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that's the reason why our tally is eleven and then those who had three children are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So its frequency is eight. And then those who had uh, four children are we have four here one, two, three four there are four one two three four and then those who had five are one two three four five one two three four five and then those who had a uh, six so this 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 so we don't have six up to here one two two children so six two and then those who had seven you can see seven here one and another one here two are two and those who had eight uh eight we have one here and another here and another here so three so uh, let's check the three again one two three four five six seven eight nine so let's add this one and make that correction and then uh, those who had nine children nine is one this one uh, let's check if we have another nine just one person so i think that's the last number there's no another number uh, i can see we have an 11 we don't have a 10 and we don't have a 12 so 11 was ones so this is three one one so that's it so what you do is you add all your tallying and frequencies and then you calculate and ensure that your total values are reaching at 48 if they are not then it means say somewhere you've made an error so that's how you prepare frequency distribution table this is going to be important uh, for our next session as we look at median and mean so make sure you keep that in mind so you can get more notes and more questions on the same in the app so you can go and check them out and see how you can be able to practice to make the frequency distribution tables so that's it for today see you in the next lesson